Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes China's big airlines spent year in red as travel overseas muted. China's Evergrande, owing more than $300 billion, ordered to liquidate. Evergrande's liquidation is ordered by Hong Kong court. Hong Kong stocks jump on China support measures, Evergrande collapse curbs rally. HK judge orders liquidation of China Evergrande. China's big airlines spent year in red as travel overseas muted. Bloomberg. China's two largest airlines, China Southern Airlines and Air China, have reported losses for the full year of 2023. China Southern Airlines expects a net loss of $487.3 million to $650.2 million due to slow recovery of international passenger flights, oversupply in the domestic market, and high oil prices. Air China expects a net loss of $130 million to $188 million due to weak demand for overseas travel, domestic competition, and high oil prices. Both airlines have been unprofitable since 2020. The airlines are expected to release their 2023 earnings on March 28. However, a ramp-up of international flights in 2024 could see the airlines return to profitability. China's Evergrande, owing more than $300 billion, ordered to liquidate. Washington Post A Hong Kong court has ordered Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer, to liquidate. The ruling comes after months of delays as the company attempted to come up with a restructuring plan. It is unclear whether Chinese authorities will recognize the court's ruling and allow international creditors to seize the company's assets. Evergrande has been trying to avoid formal bankruptcy since 2021 when it defaulted on $330 billion in debt. The company's troubles reflect the declining health of China's property sector, which has had a negative impact on China's overall prospects. China's GDP growth was only 5.2% last year, the slowest in three decades, and its stock market has performed poorly. Over the past three years, $6 trillion has been wiped off the value of Chinese and Hong Kong stocks, highlighting investors' concerns about China's economic future. Evergrande's liquidation is ordered by Hong Kong court. Nikkei Asia A Hong Kong court has ordered the liquidation of China Evergrande Group after the heavily indebted developer failed to reach a deal to restructure $300 billion in liabilities. Justice Linda Chan granted a winding-up petition filed by offshore creditors, citing an obvious lack of progress and the insolvency of the company. Liquidators will now be appointed to take control of the developer and sell its assets. The move comes as the Chinese property sector struggles to recover from the pandemic. Evergrande shares dropped by over 20% in morning trading in Hong Kong. Hong Kong stocks jump on China support measures, Evergrande collapse curbs rally. South China Morning Post Hong Kong stocks rose after China's market regulator suspended securities lending of restricted shares listed on mainland exchanges to stabilize stock prices. The Hang Seng Index gained 1.4 percent, while the Tech Index added 1.3 percent and the Shanghai Composite Index added 0.2 percent. China Evergrande, however, fell 21 percent after losing a court case to fend off liquidation. HK Judge Orders Liquidation of China Evergrande BBC A Hong Kong court has ordered the liquidation of China's Evergrande after the property giant failed to come up with a restructuring proposal. The company, which has over $325 billion of liabilities, has been the poster child of China's real estate crisis. Evergrande has defaulted before, which sent shockwaves through global financial markets. The decision will likely impact China's financial markets at a time when authorities are trying to curb a stock market sell-off. Evergrande shares fell over 20% in Hong Kong after the announcement, with trading now suspended. Evergrande will be dismantled, a big bang end to years of stumbles. New York Times China Evergrande, a real estate developer with over $300 billion in debt, has been ordered by a court in Hong Kong to liquidate. 
this move is likely to have ripple effects in financial markets already concerned about China's economy. Evergrande's collapse comes after it overbuilt and overpromised, taking money for apartments that were never built, leaving home buyers waiting and contractors unpaid. The outcome of Evergrande's liquidation will test foreign investors' belief in China's fairness and could impact the flow of money into Chinese markets. Hong Kong High Court orders Evergrande Group to liquidate. South China Morning Post China Evergrande Group has been ordered to liquidate by a Hong Kong High Court, marking the first case of its kind in the city. The ruling means that Evergrande Group's management will be taken over by provisional liquidators. Most of the company's assets are located in mainland China, meaning that the liquidators will have limited powers of enforcement over onshore assets if they cannot gain recognition from any of the three designated courts in mainland China. China tightens stock market rules after sell-off. BBC China has introduced new rules to tighten its financial industry in an attempt to halt the sell-off in its stock market. The measures include limits on short selling, a trading strategy where a trader bets that a share or other asset will fall in value. Critics see short selling as a ruthless strategy that undermines companies, while defenders argue it helps find the true value of an asset. The move comes after a series of informal measures introduced by the regulator over the past year failed to stabilize financial markets. The sell-off in China's stock market is causing concerns about its economy, particularly its property market and the issues faced by its shadow banks. Additionally, China's once-booming economy is slowing sharply, with youth unemployment hitting a record high and local government debt increasing. Wuxi Bio denies CEO military ties after share slump on U.S. bill. Bloomberg Shares of Wuxi Biologics Cayman Incorporated fell after proposed U.S. legislation would ban the company from government contracts. The legislation aims to block Wuxi and other Chinese biotech firms, claiming they are controlled by the Communist Party and pose a national security risk. Wuxi Biologics is one of the world's largest biologic contract research and manufacturing organizations. Wuxi Aptech has called the alleged findings in the proposed bill neither legitimate nor accurate and said its business won't pose a security risk. Analysts are warning that the U.S. proposal could weaken investor confidence and re-trigger geopolitical concerns. China recovery only light at end of tunnel for Hong Kong property, JLL chief. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's property market faces another 10% drop this year, as a new price war brought on by swelling inventory levels will impact any recovery in the sector, said Joseph Tseng, the chairman of real estate services firm JLL Hong Kong. The Hong Kong government said it will not put any residential or commercial sites up for sale through tender in the final quarter of this financial year, the first time it has done so in 13 years. Hong Kong made espresso machines? Firms tap tech, iPhones for smart shakeup. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong manufacturers are investing in smart production lines to improve productivity and meet the evolving demands of consumers, and the government is providing support through the 10 billion Hong Kong dollars industrialization acceleration scheme. PDSTE, a manufacturer of electronic components, plans to invest 6 million Hong Kong dollars in a smart production line that will improve productivity by 1.5 times. The line will integrate artificial intelligence to enable real-time data tracking, saving time and eliminating the need for manual labor. Decent Espresso, a coffee machine manufacturer, chose Hong Kong because of the city's international status and logistics industry. CEO John Buckman said the company, which has sold more than 10,000 units worldwide, benefited from tax regulations and strong government support. Shu Wing Steel, Hong Kong's only steel rolling mill, plans to establish a smart production line by next year to meet growing demand for green initiatives in the city and Greater Bay Area. The government is providing a 40% cash rebate for R&D spending. Modi rival becomes ally in setback to India opposition unity. Yahoo!
the political opposition in India has suffered a blow ahead of upcoming elections, after the Chief Minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, joined forces with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party. Kumar had previously been a key figure in the opposition alliance of 28 parties and was seen as a potential rival to Modi. The move comes at a time when Modi is seeking a third term in power, with a strong economy and buoyant stock market bolstering his election prospects. However, the opposition has also been weakened by divisions within its ranks. China fuels Asian stocks rally, oil climbs on Red Sea worries. Yahoo! Chinese equities led a rally in Asian stocks to start the week, after regulators took new steps over the weekend to support the market. One-time giant of African air travel mounts comeback. BBC. South African Airways, SAA, has returned to the intercontinental market after falling victim to corruption and mismanagement as well as COVID-19. SAA's financial viability is still in doubt, however, after a report by the country's Auditor General Tsakani Malyalik said the financial statements SAA had drawn up dating from the 2018-19 financial year lacked credibility. The airline recorded losses of $1.2 billion from 2018 to 2021. The airline's interim CEO, John Lamola, said this did not reflect the airline's current position, which is under new management. He said the situation had improved in the most recent financial year, with the airline now running on financial resources generated from its own operations. SAA reopened its routes from Cape Town and Johannesburg to Sao Paulo, Brazil in late 2021 and recently began selling tickets for flights to Perth, Australia. The airline is aiming to build up its business within Africa, taking on 15 extra regional routes along with four domestic ones by March 2025. However, African airlines are still expected to make a loss this year, with high operating costs, rising inflation and currency devaluation all threatening the profitability of carriers such as SAA. As players return from Asian Cup, fans urge Hong Kong to promote football better. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's football team has struggled to attract fans to its domestic league matches, despite a recent successful run in the AFC Asian Cup. The country's football association has been urged to do more to promote the sport in the region, such as advertising games in MTR stations and promoting matches on television. Fans have also called for more opportunities for local players, with a cap on overseas players in Premier League teams. The consensus among supporters is that a lack of facilities and limited government interest make it difficult to maintain improvements in the sport. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six from the Six Degrees World, bringing you the latest news from around the globe. Today, we have a diverse range of stories, from the struggles of China's big airlines to the liquidation of Evergrande, one of the world's most indebted property developers. We'll also look at the impact of these events on Hong Kong's stock market and property sector. And finally, we'll touch on some interesting developments in Hong Kong's manufacturing industry and India's political landscape. Let's start with China's big airlines. China's Southern Airlines and Air China have reported losses for the full year of 2023, with slow recovery of international passenger flights and high oil prices being major contributing factors. But there's hope on the horizon, as a ramp-up of international flights in 2024 could see these airlines return to profitability. So, keep an eye out for updates on their upcoming earnings release on March 28. Moving on to Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer. A Hong Kong court has ordered the company to liquidate after months of delays in its restructuring plan. The ruling raises questions about whether Chinese authorities will recognize the court's decision and allow international creditors to seize the company's assets. Evergrande's collapse reflects the declining health of China's property sector, which has had a negative impact on the country's overall prospects. With $330 billion in debt defaulted since 2021, Evergrande's troubles have sent shockwaves through global financial markets and highlighted investors' concerns about China's economic future. This news has had a direct impact on Hong Kong's stock market. 
the market regulator has introduced new rules to tighten the financial industry and stabilize stock prices. While this move has led to a jump in Hong Kong stocks, Evergrande's collapse has curbed the overall rally. It's a delicate balance for China's authorities as they try to control the stock market sell-off while also dealing with the fallout from Evergrande's liquidation. In other news from Hong Kong, we have some interesting developments in the manufacturing industry. Hong Kong manufacturers are investing in smart production lines to improve productivity and meet evolving consumer demands. The government is also providing support through a $10 billion industrialization acceleration scheme. From electronic components to coffee machines, these manufacturers are leveraging technology to stay competitive in the global market. It's great to see Hong Kong's manufacturing sector embracing innovation and taking advantage of the city's international status and strong government support. Shifting our focus to India, we see a setback for the political opposition as the chief minister of Bihar, Nitish Kumar, joins forces with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party. This move weakens the opposition alliance and bolsters Modi's election prospects as he seeks a third term in power. With a strong economy and buoyant stock market, Modi's party is in a favorable position. However, the opposition's divisions have also contributed to their weakened state. It will be interesting to see how this political landscape evolves in the upcoming elections. Finally, we have some news from the world of sports. South African Airways, SAA, has made a comeback to the intercontinental market after facing years of corruption, mismanagement, and the impact of COVID-19. Although the airline's financial viability is still in doubt, SAA is working towards rebuilding its business within Africa. It has reopened routes to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and started selling tickets for flights to Perth, Australia. However, like many other African airlines, SAA is expected to face challenges this year due to high operating costs, rising inflation, and currency devaluation. That's all for today's news roundup. It's been quite a journey, from the struggles of China's airlines to the liquidation of Evergrande, the developments in Hong Kong's stock market and manufacturing industry, and the political landscape in India. Remember, these stories are just the tip of the iceberg, and there's always more to explore and discuss. So, what are your thoughts on these news items? Do you have any questions or insights to share? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.